Pushpa and I are reading from the 14th discourse of the Bhagavad Gita, The Three Qualities, and we are in the second half of Discourse 14, and we will be reading uh, verses 15 to 27, which is the end of Discourse 14. Slope 15. Rajasi pralaya gattva karma sadishu jayate tatha prali nastamasi muthayonishu jayate. Slope 15. And I'm reading from uh, the Penguin Classic Bhagavad Gita, translated by Laurie Pat Patton. Um, reading the Skylight Illuminations Bhagavad Gita, translated by Sri Purohit Swami, with annotations by Kendra Cross and Burroughs. And I'm reading Bhagavad Gita, um, translated by R.K. Sharma, with Carol Pitts and Les Morgan. So, uh, beginning verse 15. When at death one dissolves into rajas, one is born among those clinging to action. When at death one dissolves in tamas, one is born in the wombs of the deluded. That was the pattern. The prose reads, when passion prevails, the soul is reborn among those who love activity. When ignorance rules, it enters the wombs of the ignorant. The Sharma reads, if one dies in the state of rajas, that person is born among those attached to action. Likewise, if one dies in the state of tamas, that person is born among deluded beings. Slok 16. Karmana Shukrutasyahu Sati Tvakaha Nirmalaha Falama Rajas Tu Fala Dukha Magyana Tamasaha Falama Stoke 16. The pattern reads. They say that action well done has fruit without stain, filled with sattva, but the fruit of rajas is pain, and the fruit of tamas is ignorance. The, pra the prose reads, they say the fruit of a meritorious action is spotless and full of purity. The outcome of passion is misery, and the end of ignorance, darkness. And the Sharma reads, they say the fruit of noble action is pure and sattvika, but fruit of rajas is misery. The fruit of tamas is ignorance. Slok 17. Sattva Tasajya Yate Gyana Rajaso Lobha Eva Cha Pramada Moho Tamaso Bhavato the Gyana Meva Cha. Stroke 17. The pattern reads From Sattva, wisdom is born, and from Rajas, greed is born. Neglect, confusion, and ignorance arise from Tamas. prose reads, purity engenders wisdom, passion, avarice, and ignorance, folly, infatuation, and darkness. And the Sharma reads, knowledge arises from sattva and greed arises from rajas, and likewise negligence, delusion, and ignorance arise from tamas. Slope 18. Urdeva Gajachiti 
सत्वस्था मध्य तिष्ठित्व राजसाह जधन्य गुण वृत्तिस्था अध्यो गच्छति तामसाह श्लोकी तीन The pattern reads The ones who abide in sattva rise up the ones who have rajas abide in the middle the ones who abide in the lowest guna state those who have tamas go downward the prose reads when purity is in the ascendant the man evolves when passion he neither evolves nor degenerates when ignorance he is lost Sharma reads Those established in sattva go upwards those under the influence of rajas stay in the middle those dominated by tamas under the influence of the lowest guna go downwards slok 19 Gunendra kartar yada drashtanupashyati gunebhya shacha param veti मभ्यदाव सोदधी गच्छति अह श्लोक 19 when the one who observes perceives an agent which is not separate from the gunas and knows the element higher than the gunas that one reaches my being that was the pattern the prose reads as soon as a man understands that it is only the qualities which act and nothing else and perceives that which is beyond he attains my divine nature and there's a footnote that which is beyond the qualities is god which is ultimately the source of everything the enlightened perceive this o arjuna just as a person who awakes from sleep realizes that he had a dream just as an actor isn't deceived by the role that he's playing in the same way we should understand the qualities without identifying with them that's according to janana janana deva the short this remind this look reminded me of that um, actor who committed suicide after acting in the movie joker who who was that you don't remember that well i didn't see the movie joker yet not the new one the old one oh the old one okay i'll have to check that out okay the sharma reads slope 19 when the witness sees no other agent or of actions than the gunas and knows what transcends the gunas he attains identification with me and there's a footnote compare verses 13 29 and 18 16 slope 20 the actor's name is heath ledger he acted oh keith ledger yeah mm-hmm. in dark night it just it his name popped popped up <laughs> okay okay slope 20 may his soul rest in peace yeah rest in peace gunan netan atitya trindehi deh samumbhad van janma mrutyu jara dukhe vimukt ko damrutama sanutate slok 20 the pattern reads when the embodied one transcends these three gunas which come into being in the body that one reaches eternity and is free from sorrow old age death and birth and the prose reads when the soul transcends the qualities which are the real cause of physical existence then freed from birth and death from old age and misery he quaffs the nectar of immortality and there's a footnote when the pieces of a broken pot are thrown away the space which was inside the pot is absorbed 
by the space outside. In the same way, if a person remembers his true nature, he experiences nothing but union and awareness of the body passes away. Such a person has transcended the qualities, having attained enlightenment while still in the body, according to Janana Deva. Sharma reads, Transcending these three gunas that are the origin of the body, the embodied one attains immortality, liberated from the afflictions of birth, death, and old age. Slope 20. I'm sorry, slope 21. Arjuna said, Splendid one, does one who has tr transcended the three gunas have special marks and practice? And how does one transcend the three gunas? Prose reads, My Lord, by what signs can he who has transcended the qualities be recognized? How does he act? How does he live beyond them? The Sharma reads, O oh Lord, by what signs is a person identified as having transcended the three gunas? What conduct would he have, and how does he transcend these three gunas? Slope 22. Prakashaha cha pravruttihi cha mohameva ha pandava na Dreshti sampravruttani na nivruttani kardyakshati. Slope 22. The Blessed One said, Son of Pandu, that one does not hate occurrences of confusion or of exertion or of brightness, nor does that one desire that they not occur. That was the pattern. The prose reads, O Prince, uh, or Lord Sri Krishna replied, O Prince, he who shuns not the quality which is present and longs not for that which is absent. The Sharma reads, The Blessed Lord said, He does not hate enlightenment, activity, and even delusion when they appear nor long for them when they disappear, O son of Pandu. And there's a footnote. Enlightenment, activity, and delusion are characteristics of sattva, rajas, and tamas. And uh, slopes 23 through 25 uh, come together. So let's read 23 to 25. Okay. Udasina vad Nadasino Guneyo na vichalyate guna vartana ityeva toda vatishtiti nedate slok Samadhu Samadhu Khasukha Svasthaha Saloshta Shyamaka Urjanaha Tulya Priya Priyo Dhirastu Lajya Nindya Tiyama Sanstutihi Slok 24 Mana Pamana 
सर्वारंभ परित्यागी गुणातीतः स उच्चते श्लोक ट्वेंटी फाइव एंड श्लोक This is the pattern, verses twenty-three to twenty-five. One who stands firm and does not stir, one who is seated as if sitting apart, who is not shaken by the gunas but thinks the gunas are turning, one who is self-contained, for whom pleasure and pain are the same, as are a lump of earth, a stone, and a piece of gold, one who is steady. For whom the loved and the unloved are equal, as are praise and blame, the one for whom honor and dishonor are equal, as are friend and enemy, who abandons all endeavors, that one is said to transcend the gunas. And the prose reads: He who maintains an attitude of indifference. Who is not disturbed by the qualities? Who realizes that it is only they who act and remains calm? Who accepts pleasure and pain as it comes? Is centered in his self, to whom a piece of clay or a stone or a goal or gold are the same? Who neither likes nor dislikes? Who is steadfast, indifferent alike to praise or censure? Who looks equally upon honor and dishonor? Loves friends and foes alike, abandons all initiative, such as he would he who transcends the qualities. And there are two footnotes, plus a separate comment. The reason for acting with indifference is that actions cannot really affect the soul for good or ill; they concern matter exclusively, according to Edgerton. General comment. Neither seek nor avoid. Take what comes. This is freedom. To be affected by nothing. Do not merely endure. Be unattached. Remember the story of the bull. A mosquito sat on the long horn of a certain bull. Then his conscience troubled him, and he said, "Mr. Bull, I have been sitting here a long time. Perhaps I annoy you. I am sorry. I will go away." But the bull replied. Oh no, not at all! Bring your whole family and live on my horn. What can you do to me, Swami Vivekananda? And another footnote: A sleeping man doesn't care whether a snake or a heavenly nymph is lying near him. Similarly, this these pairs of opposites don't affect the person who is united with God, according to Jnana Deva. And the Sharma reads verses twenty-three to twenty-five. One who sits like a neutral person, undisturbed by the gunas, only thinking the gunas are operating, who maintains balance and does not waver. One who is the same in pain and pleasure, established in his own self, regarding a clod of earth, a stone, or gold as the same, for whom both the favored and the unfavored are equal. Who remains steady, who maintains equality with regard to criticism and praise, one who is the same in honor and dishonor, the same to friend or foe alike, who has given up all initiatives in which there is personal attachment, that person is considered to have transcended the gunas. Slope twenty-six. मा च योद्वभिचारेण भक्ति योगेने सेवते स गुणांसमति तते तान ब्रह्मह पुयाय कल्पते श्लोक 26 The pattern reads and the one who serves me with the yoga of devotion and does not waver That one transcends the gunas and becomes ready for becoming one with Brahman. The prose reads: 
and he who serves me and only me with unfaltering devotion shall overcome the qualities and become one with the eternal. The Sharma reads, and he who serves me with the unswerving practice of devotion, he transcending these gunas is fit for identification with Brahman. Slok 27. Example, he pratishtaha mamrutta shava vyasya cha sashava tasya cha dharmasya sukhasye kanti kasya cha. Slok 27. The pattern reads, I am the support of Brahman, the immortal and imperishable, and the support of everlasting dharma and the support of unique joy. The prose reads, for I am the home of the spirit, the continual source of immortality, of eternal righteousness and of infinite joy. The Sharma reads, I am the substratum of the immortal, imperishable Brahman of eternal dharma and of of the eternal dharma and of absolute bliss. And there's a colophon. Here ends the 14th chapter named the yoga of differentiation between the three gunas in the Upanishad sung by Lord Sri Krishna in the dialogue between Sri Krishna and Arjuna in the scripture of yoga pertaining to knowledge about Brahman. And our next reading will be um, Discourse 15, and that will be uh, about the Lord God. And so that should be quite interesting. Uh, we will do that reading next Monday. So thank you very much, Kushbu, and uh, I will see you next time. Have a great weekend. Have a very good day. Yep. Have a good day. Good weekend. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.